Hello there, I'm Mike and welcome to Disney Parks Addict. Today, we'll be taking a look at all 52 of the rides and attractions at the Disneyland Paris Resort. First, let's begin with the main Disneyland Park. You enter the park into the classic Main Street USA, but before that, you will need to walk under the first attraction. It is of course the Disneyland Railway. This train takes you all around the park with stations at Main Street, Frontierland, Fantasyland and Discoveryland. It also features unique dioramas and even takes you inside some of the attractions around the park. Unlike other Disney parks around the world, the first land that you come to as you reach the end of Main Street USA and head to the left is Frontierland, rather than the usual Adventureland. The first attraction you will see is Big Thunder Mountain. This popular minecart roller coaster has similarities to the Magic Kingdom version in Orlando, Florida, but with a totally unique layout. It is mainly located on an island in the middle of the rivers of the far west, where Tom Sawyer's Island would normally sit. It's a great coaster that offers amazing views of other attractions in Frontierland and the rest of the Disneyland Paris Resort. Next is Phantom Manor. This dark ride is Disneyland Paris' version of a haunted mansion attraction which can be found at other Disney parks around the world. Although it is similar to the other haunted mansions, it has been designed to be darker and scarier than previous versions and offers a unique storyline and soundtrack. Similar to Big Thunder Mountain, this was an opening day attraction but has gone through various updates throughout the years. You can take a ride on either of the two riverboats at the Thunder Mesa Riverboat Landing. The two riverboats are Mark Twain, based on the original Disneyland version, and the unique Molly Brown, named after the famous Titanic survivor. Each riverboat features a recorded conversation with the captain and either Mark Twain or Molly Brown as they discuss the different attractions within Frontierland. This is a great way to have a little break and take in the beautiful sights and sounds within this amazing immersive land. For the little ones, you can visit the Frontier Playground. This features canoe-shaped slides, teepees, and other small playground activities that are perfect for the younger guests. You will also be able to find the Frontierland Theater, which is currently showing Lion King, Rhythm of the Pride Lands. This is an amazing and unique show that features acrobats, dancers, and singers as they perform all your favorite songs from the Lion King movie. There are plenty of restaurants and other smaller attractions within Frontierland, which makes it a great way to start your day in the Disneyland Paris Park. The next land you come to as you walk through the connected walkways is Adventureland, and my favorite land in the park. This Adventureland has four different areas, with the first being the Adventureland Bazaar, with Middle Eastern influences, and houses the walkthrough attraction, Aladdin's Enchanted Passage. This attraction features a series of different scenes from the classic Disney animation, Aladdin. The next area has more of an African inspiration and mainly features shops and restaurants. And at the back of Adventureland is the mysterious Asian jungle, which is home to the amazing roller coaster Indiana Jones and the Temple of Peril. This was the first roller coaster to feature an inversion at any Disney park when it opened in 1993. You are taken on an adventure on a mining train through a lost temple as you help Indiana Jones escape. The final area of Adventureland, and by far the largest, is inspired by the Caribbean. You can go to the Adventure Isle, which is comprised of two different islands and four different attractions. On the North Island is the classic Swiss Family Treehouse, which has more details than any version found at other Disney parks around the world. You can go under the tree, where you can explore a network of caves filled with roots and hidden walkways, and was used as a Swiss Family's cellar. You can also find a wrecked ship that the castaways originally used. On the South Island, you can find Captain Hook's ship moored near Skull Rock, where you can meet Mr. Smee and Peter Pan's nemesis, Captain Hook. You can find two playgrounds at the Pirate's Beach that has plenty of rope ladders, slides, and you can even walk the plank. The last part of Adventure Isle is the huge mountain known as Spyglass Hill. It is mainly composed of mazes and caves where you can search for the hidden treasure. Some caves even reference the 1950 Disney movie, Treasure Island. The final attraction in Adventureland is the guest favorite, Pirates of the Caribbean. This floating dark ride is most similar to the original Disneyland version and is the second longest version with a ride duration of 10 minutes and 30 seconds. It takes you through various scenes of battles, a town being raided by pirates, and of course the infamous Jack Sparrow makes an appearance. If you're only going to ride one ride in Adventureland, then this has to be it. 
We now move on to the land with the most attractions, Fantasyland. The first attraction is right underneath the beautiful Sleeping Beauty Castle, and that is the Dragon's Lair. This walkthrough attraction takes you to a dimly lit cavern and features a 27 meter long dragon that was the largest audio animatronic that Disney Imagineering had ever created when the park opened in 1992. Don't worry, the dragon is sleeping, but you'll still need to be careful not to wake it. Inside the Sleeping Beauty Castle, if you scale the stone steps, you can enjoy another walkthrough attraction. This is a retelling of the famous fairy tale through the use of illustrated books, rich tapestries, and beautiful stained glass windows. Back into the main section of Fantasyland is Lancelot's Carousel. This is similar to the other carousels found at the various Disney parks around the world, and it is best to ride this attraction at night so you can experience all the amazing lights around Fantasyland and within the carousel itself. There are also three classic dark rides in Fantasyland, the first being Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. You'll see Snow White meeting the dwarfs, the evil queen creating her master plan, and of course the prince saving the day. The next dark ride is Pinocchio's Fantastic Journey, which will take you through scenes that feature the Stromboli Circus, Pleasure Island, Monstro the Whale, and other characters from the 1940 animated film. The final classic dark ride is Peter Pan's Flight, which is one of the most popular attractions in the park. You board the flying pirate ship as you travel through scenes in London and Neverland. This version is slightly longer than the original, with an extended scene of flying over London at night. From one classic to another, Dumbo the Flying Elephant is an aerial carousel style ride that is perfect for younger guests. This is the only attraction that can be found at all six Disney castle parks worldwide, so you know it's a fan favourite. Alice's Curious Labyrinth is a hedge maze attraction that takes you through different scenes from the 1951 animated version of the film. It is comprised of two sections. The Tolgi Woods focuses on Alice's journey through Wonderland and all the characters she meets. The second section is the Queen of Hearts maze, where you'll finally reach the Queen's Castle, which will give you amazing views of Fantasyland and other areas of Disneyland Paris. Next is another Alice in Wonderland themed attraction, the Mad Hatter's Teacups. This spinning teacup ride can be found at four other Disney parks, but this is the only version to feature a petal shaped glass roof and surrounding gardens. Next up is everybody's favourite dark ride on water. Of course, It's a Small World needs no introduction, with its catchy song and iconic Mary Blair style audio animatronic dolls dressed in traditional costumes from cultures around the world. Disneyland Paris' version has a completely different facade and is the only one to feature a section of dolls from North America. Unfortunately, at the date of this video, It's a Small World is currently under renovation, but is planned to reopen later in 2022. The Storybook Land can Canal boats will take you on a leisurely paced outdoor boat ride through a winding canal featuring settings from Disney animated films recreated in miniature. This is a perfect way to relax and take in the different stories that Disney has shown us over its 70 year history. The final attraction in Fantasyland is the Casey Jr. Circus Train. This is a roller coaster for small children which has great views of the Storybook Land Castle and other scenes that are featured in the Storybook Land Canal Boats. We now move on to the final land within Disneyland Paris Park, which is the amazing Discovery Land. This is of course known as Tomorrowland at other Disney parks, but this version has a completely different aesthetic as it uses influences from Leonardo da Vinci, H.G. Wells, and most notably Jules Verne, which creates a completely unique and wonderful setting. The first attraction that you will come to is Star Tours The Adventure Continues. This 3D motion simulator takes you on a journey with C-3PO and R2-D2 and has great rewritability, as there are randomized scenes from all the different movies, which creates 54 different combinations, so each time feels new and exciting. Sticking with the Star Wars theme, you have to check out Hyperspace Mountain. This was previously known as Space Mountain Mission 2, but to celebrate the park's 25th anniversary, a Star Wars overlay was added to this exciting roller coaster. This is the only Space Mountain to feature inversions and a section of the track that exits and re-enters the interior. It's my favourite attraction at Disneyland Paris, so I hope you go and try it out. Next is Buzz Lightyear Laser Blast. This shooting dark ride takes you to battle the evil Emperor Zerg as you fight alongside Buzz Lightyear and the Space Command. Do you have what it takes to be a galactic hero? 
there is a spinning rocket attraction named Orbitron Machine Volants. Instead of a rocket at its central axis, this version resembles a bronze 19th century rotating planetarium and is also the first version of the attraction to be installed at ground level instead of atop an elevated platform. Next is Autopia, which lets guests steer specially designed cars through an enclosed track. This is perfect for younger guests that love cars and want to experience the drive of a lifetime. The Mysteries of the Nautilus is a walkthrough attraction based on the movie 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. You can explore Captain Nemo's submarine and even see the battle with a giant squid. The final attraction in Discoveryland is Mickey's PhilharMagic. This 4D show features 3D effects, scents and water as well as a number of different characters and scenes from Disney animations. Recently there has been a new scene added featuring characters from the popular Coco movie so make sure you go and check it out. To celebrate the park's 30th anniversary, they have created a brand new parade and show called Dream and Shine Brighter. This takes place in the central plaza and is filled with lots of characters, dancing and plenty of your favourite Disney songs. And don't worry, you will still be able to catch the popular Disney Stars on Parade which celebrates the discovery of the lands of imagination, represented by various Disney and Pixar films such as Toy Story, The Jungle Book, the Lion King, Finding Nemo, Sleeping Beauty and Frozen. If you have ever seen a Disney parade before, then you know they are not to be missed. Also for their 30th anniversary, Disneyland Paris have created a new nighttime spectacular called Disney Delight. This uses special drone technology to create a light choreography that illuminates the sky over Sleeping Beauty Castle. It is then followed by the classic Disney Illuminations which uses projection mapping on the castle, water fountains, fire, music, other special effects and of course fireworks to create a special nighttime show filled with all your favourite Disney songs and characters which is the perfect way to end your night at this great Disney park. Now let's take a look at the park next door, Walt Disney Studios. You will first enter the park into the front lot, which is home to many shops and guest services as well as a beautiful statue of Mickey. You will also be able to see the Earful Tower that was also previously found at Hollywood Studios and the original Walt Disney Studios in Burbank, California. It now serves as the park's icon. You will then walk into Disney Studio One, a covered walkway featuring a full recreation of a Hollywood street where you can find some more shopping locations along with some quick service restaurants. As you exit the soundstage and turn right, you will enter Toon Studio, a land inspired by Disney and Pixar animated characters. The first attraction in this guide is Animation Celebration, which is an interactive experience where you will step into the world of Frozen in a unique show called Frozen A Musical Invitation. First, you will meet Anna, Kristoff and Sven in Kristoff's barn before heading on through to Elsa's Ice Palace for a wonderful celebration. All your favourite songs and characters appear in the show, with the dialogue being a combination of English and French, allowing more guests to enjoy the show. It is unknown if this show will continue with the opening of Arendelle World of Frozen next year, but either way it's a great show and definitely worth checking out. In the animation celebration, you can also head to the Animation Academy, where you will be taught how to draw one of the amazing Disney characters. Further into Toon Studio, you will come to the Animagic Theatre that is home to the spellbounding live show Mickey and the Magician. The show is set in a great magician studio in 19th century Paris where his apprentice, Mickey, has been given the task of cleaning the whole workshop. As you can probably guess, things don't go as smoothly as Mickey had hoped and he is transported into the magical worlds of Cinderella, Beauty and the Beast, The Lion King, Aladdin and Frozen. With an amazing soundtrack featuring songs from these magical worlds, along with beautiful special effects and puppetry, this is truly one of the best unique Disney shows found at any Disney park. Right next door to the theatre is the Flying Carpets over Agrabah. This is a spinner ride similar to the Magic Carpets of Aladdin over in Magic Kingdom or the classic Dumbo the Flying Elephant. The story is a little different with this one as you'll be starring as extras in Genie's directional debut with the Agrabah movie set giving a nice backdrop. 
We now move on to the largest area in the park, Worlds of Pixar, that contains a variety of attractions from popular Pixar movies. First is Crush's Coaster, a family spinning roller coaster based on Crush the Sea Turtle from Finding Nemo. This is mostly set indoors and features memorable scenes from the movie with the use of screens and audio animatronics. This is a great little fun coaster that is perfect for guests of all ages. Opposite Crush's Coaster is Cars Race Rally, a spinning whip ride similar to Alien Swirling Saucers in Hollywood Studios or Mater's Junkyard Jamboree in Disney's California Adventure. Guests sit in various different cars as they are whipped around four spinning plateaus at the Radiator Springs service station. This is fun for all the family, especially those that are fans of the Cars movies. Further into Worlds of Pixar, the path splits into two, and if you go right, you'll head to Ratatouille the Adventure. This is an exciting, trackless dark ride that shrinks you down to experience life in the kitchen as a rat alongside Remy and friends. It opened in 2014, and due to the popularity, it has now been added to the France Pavilion in Epcot at Walt Disney World in 2021. This is an amazing addition to Worlds of Pixar, and it's definitely a must ride when visiting Walt Disney Studios. The ride is surrounded by stunning Parisian scenery, along with some amazing restaurants and shopping locations. Opposite Ratatouille the Adventure is the Toy Story Playland that features three exciting attractions. Similar Toy Story lands have been added to the Hong Kong and Shanghai Disneylands, but this was the first one to ever be created in 2010. First is RC Racer, a steel shutter roller coaster which gives you some high thrills for such a simple attraction. Guests will take a ride on RC as you're taken back and forth on an orange half loop track. Next is Slinky Dog Zigzag Spin, a caterpillar style ride which is a great way to introduce younger guests to thrill rides. And finally, Toy Soldier Parachute Drop, which lifts guests up an 80-foot tower before gently tumbling back down to earth in a series of rises and falls. It is also a great way to get an amazing view of the land and its surroundings. The final attraction in the world of Pixar is located further down at the back of the park, and this is one of the newest attractions, Cars Road Trip. This was previously the studio tram tour that took guests through a selection of movie memorabilia and show scenes, but has now been transformed into a Cars-themed attraction filled with all your favorite characters from the franchise. Highlights include Mater's iFuel Tower, a replica of the Eiffel Tower made with car parts, and the Cartastrophe Canyon that has some amazing fire and water effects. Until all the expansions have been completed, currently the park is not a full loop, so you will need to go back through Worlds of Pixar and Toon Studio to get to the next area of the park, Production Courtyard. This features Hollywood-inspired street sets and the production facilities of movie lots. The first attraction is something you can't miss, the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror, a new dimension of chills. This amazing drop ride has everything we love about a great Disney park attraction. An awesome storyline, incredible theming, an atmospheric queue line and pre-show, and just a great thrilling experience overall. It is slightly different to the version in Hollywood Studios, and in 2019, new elements and storylines were added, which gives a great rewritability. So why don't you ride this elevator that travels directly to the Twilight Zone. Production Central is also home to three different shows, mainly aimed at the younger guests. In Studio D, the Disney Junior Dream Factory is a unique show where guests need to take part in repairing the factory along with the hosts Mickey and Minnie. Popular Disney Junior characters also appear throughout, including Fancy Nancy Clancy, Timon and Vampirina. Also in Studio D is Stitch Live, an interactive show that allows younger guests to communicate with Stitch via a live satellite link-up. It's amazing that the real-time computer graphics really feels like you are talking to Stitch as you will need to assist him through a variety of adventures. Due to the nature of this technology, it makes each viewing a totally unique experience that even the older guests can enjoy. Over in the studio theater, you can catch a showing of the amazing nature film Symphony for Our World. This award-winning National Geographic documentary is a powerful tribute to the beauty and wonders of the natural world that also includes an amazing soundtrack. We now move on to the final and most exciting new land in Walt Disney Studios, the amazing Avengers Campus. The first attraction you'll come to is Spider-Man Web Adventure. With the use of screens and physical sets, you join Peter Parker throughout the different areas of Avengers Campus as you try to stop loose spider bots before they cause too much damage. 
The ride uses new technology which will track your hands as you shoot webs just like Spider-Man. You can also purchase a selection of merchandise that can be used on the attraction to improve your ability. This was first introduced at Disney's California Adventure as Web Slingers in 2021 and is a perfect ride that lets all the family compete for the highest score. Avengers Campus also includes some exciting new live hero encounters and dining locations. The Pim Kitchen is an American style buffet restaurant serving larger than life food and is based on Ant-Man and the Stark Factory is a quick service location serving pizza and pasta in a cool warehouse setting filled with Marvel Easter eggs and the Iron Man Hulkbuster suit. The hero encounters can be seen throughout the day and include a dance challenge with Guardians of the Galaxy, meeting the Warriors of Wakanda, and even see Spider-Man, Black Widow, and Black Panther in action against the Taskmaster. You will also be able to see a selection of Avengers appear at the Heroic Welcome, located around the Quinjet, and you can head to the Hero Training Center to get some special lessons from Iron Man, Captain Marvel, and Spider-Man. Overall, there are lots of amazing things to do in Avengers Campus, which brings us to the final attraction in this guide, and the most thrilling in all of the Disneyland Paris Resort, Avengers Assemble Flight Force. This is a steel-launched roller coaster that was formerly the popular rock and roller coaster starring Aerosmith, but all of it has been completely rethemed as you join Iron Man and Captain Marvel in an emergency mission to space. The pre-show features an awesome Iron Man audio animatronic that details the mission before heading onto the ride. Along with the high-speed launch, the coaster features three inversions as well as screens throughout the ride through with Iron Man and Captain Marvel flying alongside the guests. This is an amazing, thrilling attraction that will please Marvel and coaster fans alike. If you're looking to visit Disneyland Paris, then check out Attraction Ticks. They are currently selling park tickets for 49% off the gate price and they also offer great deals on Disney and non-Disney hotels in the Disneyland Paris Resort area. Go check out my affiliate link in the description box below to make a saving on your next Disney vacation. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button and let us know your favorite attraction at the Disneyland Paris Resort. And if you want to help support the channel, then check out my new Patreon page that offers a selection of added benefits at the four different tiers. Just check the link in the description box below. If you would like to know more about the different hotels at Disneyland Paris, you can check out this handy guide video here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on Disney Parks Addict.